Hi everybody, Carla Nicole. Um, the transformation series, we're at it again. So if you have not yet signed up or subscribed to my YouTube channel, I need you to go over there after this live and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel called Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. I also need you guys to sign up for my course, Learn to Unlearn. So welcome everybody, it's Carla Nicole. And I'm going to get started today. I am Carla Nicole. If you have not yet um, had the honor of being a part of my um, show every Sunday, I do this at 12 p.m. Be sure to share your, with your friends that um, I have this every day, every Sunday at 12 p.m. And it is, um, I tell you, it is so awesome. I'm having so much great feedback from everybody just taking 30 minutes of their time every Sunday and hanging with me and allowing me to just impart in them some very, very interesting and intricate information that they can use um, that can help them with their life. Hey, Paul. Hey, Carolyn. Glad to see you both are here. And um, so I want to talk about patterns today, okay? Um, I think a lot of times in life, hey, Mario, I think a lot of times in life, um, we have, um, patterns that we take on in life. And I don't think we, <laughs> a lot of times we have these patterns in our life and we really don't even know why. They're just patterns. They're just things we do. They're things that, um, we habitually, um, get caught in to finding ourselves in a loop with certain people, types, or scenarios, or drama, or just all kinds of stuff. And so I want to talk about how important it is to learn to unlearn out of the thinking that our routines cannot be changed. Now here's the thing, a lot of times we have different scenarios, different situations that go on in our life. And let me just tell you, um... From the way we parent to the way we interact with our family, our friends, to the partners we pick. <laughs> okay, this is very important. To the partners we picked, um, even the friends we have, um, we need to be a little more mindful of why we're choosing the people we're picking and basically what's going on with um, the patterns we're in. So if we're in a pattern that, um, hey, Andrew, if you're in a pattern that you're just not finding to be uh, beneficial in your life, you have to learn to unlearn out of those patterns. And I think that, you know, a lot of times we'll get into or get involved in different things that we don't realize that has got us in this um, sometimes a rut, sometimes into a depression um, I hear a lot of clients that I'm dealing with right now that are dealing with, you know, um, marriages where the, the partners are unavailable. Um, there's a lot of people dealing with some tough stuff. I mean, and so, hey, Dar Darrell. And so um, I believe it's important that um, we learn to unlearn how to escape from the pattern, okay, if you will. And I don't think that a lot of times we think about that because we, we have a tendency to believe how we're doing what we're doing is okay, right? It's cool. But we just need to stop, look, and listen to our life sometimes. Even when everything's going well, even when everyone is go even when everything is going fantastic, we still need to stop, look, and listen at our life. Because do you realize that when things are going in a great direction, it takes nothing for those old patterns to show up, either on your end or the other person's end or people's end or children's end. All kinds of things happen. Life is always in abundance of change, always. So as soon as we get comfortable or we're, oh, this is great, I love it. As soon as we get comfortable in our now, it, should, it switches, it changes. But how we respond and how we react is key. I want y'all to get this. This is very important. How we respond and how we react is key. 
So even when everything is beautiful and wonderful, and I wish that for everyone, I just want you to understand that change happens. <laughs> change is going to come, <laughs> okay? Change happens. So I want you always and always prepared to always step outside of yourself and look at your life. Look at how it's going. I'm talking about on all cylinders. Family, job and career, financially, and health. Those four are very important to stop, look, and listen to and pay attention to. Do I need to take heed to some things financially? Do I need to take heed of some things relationally in my family, with my kids, with my parents, with my siblings, with my friends, with my family? Do I have to take a look, stop, and listen to what's going on with my health? I've had this bump that I, I, you know, forever, and I'm not taking a, I'm not taking the time to go to the physician and have it looked at. Uh, I'm gonna need for you to get on that. If you're having health issues, even if it's minor, you need to go and take a look at it. See, our patterns has a lot of times when we don't want to pay attention. We would much rather be uh, a victim of our own life. But that doesn't have to be the case. And what I mean by a victim of our own life, we like to ride the ride and say, well, you know, oh, I'm so miserable. My wife or husband didn't do this for me and I'm so disappointed. Or my kids didn't come by to see me and now I'm so disappointed. Or this one said this to me and I'm so sad or whatever. Or I'm not getting paid what I should be worth and all this. We got to step out of that. And say, what is the pattern that I keep endorsing and putting my signature as okay? Because understand something. When we are approving certain things going on in our life, we're putting our signature on it. How is your mate treating you? Is your mate, have you graded your mate lately? I mean, really graded your mate. What is your mate in your life? A, it's important. I'm saying you have to step outside of you and you have to start looking at your life. So what is your mate doing in your life? Is your mate a grade A, B, C, D, or F? Got to ask yourself these questions. And based on the grade you give your mate, then you need to start figuring out, well, why am I signing my name and giving a signature to it being approved that this mate I'm with is a level F, but I'm signing my name to stay in with this mate? Why? Got to ask ourselves these hard, hard questions. Then we have to sign up and, and take heed at to how's your children doing and treating you? You know, I see a lot of parents being mistreated by their kids. And it's like, okay, your children are not treating you well. Your children are taking advantage. Your children are coming over and expecting you to do this and do that for them. Okay, but that's out of order. <laughs> that's out of order we need to step back and start to analyze what our life is and like I said even if you're snug and comfortable and I have a beautiful life and I love it even if you're snug and comfortable everything's going well hey that's wonderful but change gonna come remember I told you that earlier so now what what do we do how do we handle the change how do we handle the pattern of how we react to the change because, see, change is in the inevitable, honey. I'm changing the grades coming regardless if I want it to come or not. <laughs> so the change is coming regardless. What do we need to do to make and rectify the changes? And, see, learning to unlearn is so important because a lot of times we don't realize that the way we react to things, the way we react to things, the way we react to somebody saying something and doing something and having this going on, how we react is key to how it's going to affect our life, period, point blank. So with that said, see, get this, this is very important. How we react to certain things is very important. But what we can do to change is our way to which we respond. Okay, so what does that mean? I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you one of my patterns that I, I love bringing up about because, you know, I don't mind talking about me because at this point, you know, being a wisdom coach, I have to be honest about 
my own personal journey. Yes, I have my own personal journey. Yes, I've made my mistakes. Yes, I have had patterns, let me tell you. Patterns over life that I would say from early 20s on to now, I had to start restructuring some things, making some changes. And so we'll just say partner choices I can use as an example. What did I change? Well, first of all, I had to learn to unlearn why I was attracted to certain types of partners. <laughs> now, that's not easy to do, but I had to stop looking and listening and be like, why am I attracted to someone versus not attracted to someone else? Now, the people that I'm attracted to, good guys, uh, you know, had their head on straight, but sometimes they were just unavailable to be in a relationship. They just didn't, they were unavailable. They just didn't have the time or they didn't have the need or want to be in one. And that's fine. So I had to start to say, why do I keep signing my name? Not on all of them. I wasn't signed, married to all of them. But I kept giving my signature and giving the okay. That is fine for you to be unavailable and me to be accepting of it. So what is that pattern that I have to change? I had to get serious with myself. So what I, in, well, what I decided to do is this is, is this is very important. I decided to say to myself, if someone really is unavailable to be in a relationship with you, why do you continue on being in a relationship with them? That doesn't make any sense. But I'm still, because I'm so obsessed with wanting to be in a relationship, I had to be in a relationship whether he was in a relationship with me or not. That's a pattern. How did I break it? I had to start to reconfigure some things. First of all, being a woman that has no problem with saying what I want and what I need in a relationship, it, it works to my advantage sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm like, look, this is who I am as a woman. This is what I want. Are you able to do this? Do you want to do this? And see, a lot of times, you know, it's wonderful. Women are out here, oh, I want to be engaged. I want a man to ask me to marry me and all that. That's wonderful. But at the end of the day, I'm like, well, to me, I think that, you know, a proposal should be on both sides because a man can ask you all day and you can say yes, but is that really what you want to do? Or are you just saying yes because he wants to? I that's just my opinion. But anyway, besides all that, I just want to tell you that I had to change and alter some things to, com to basically get out of continuing on with a pretend for continuing on with a, um, a trend, if you will, in my life of wanting to be with un unavailable men. And so I'm like, you know, I got to make some changes here. This, this is unacceptable to me. I don't know why I keep doing this. And why am I endorsing this? And what is it inside me that is allowing this? And see, this is the stuff that we need to do and check in on ourselves, even when we're in good standing in our life. Because some things can change in a beautiful relationship. Some things can alter in a beautiful relationship. You can have a relationship that's been going well for 10, 20 years, and the next thing you know, it takes a shift. And you're like, well, what's going on? I don't know what to do. And see, it's very important that you pay attention at all times that we all go through changes and, 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 and challenges in life. And there's some unknowns. Remember I showed you guys the outlet strip, and I talked about how every partner you're with has various different outlets that you need to plug into. Remember that? I talked about that. And I talked about the one side of the plug that is unknown. I talked about that. I said you got to plug in to all of the plugs of your partner. But remember, your partner has an unknown to them that they don't even know, that they may discover later on in life, um, soon. We don't know. So there has to be a part of you willing to understand that there is a blossoming that happens in our, in, our, in our relationships. So even in our parenting, even in our co, you know, with our coworkers, with our mates and our, 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 our children and our family and our friendships. So 
I want you guys to get this because I think it's very important when, when it comes to patterns and when it comes to things that happen within relationships. We need to be honest with self, okay? Um, the first thing is learning that there is a pattern. That's number one. Remember, I said when I started to step back and look, I'm like, in the last, I don't know, in the last few gentlemen that I dated, they were all unavailable. So why do I keep making the same decision over and over and over again with the same gentleman, but just a different name, different birth date? He's just unavailable. He's not willing to be in a relationship. So what is it that I keep signing up for? And so I had to step back and notice it first that there is a pattern. Now, we also have to think about when we're, when we're dealing with our children. Why do your children keep doing things over and over and over again? For instance, why do you keep allowing your children to take advantage of the things that you need to get done in your home, but they, they take precedence over that? So, for instance, you, you're doing something that is very important for what you need to get done. Your child reaches out. We'll just say your adult child or your, young, your younger child, and they reach out and say, Hey, Mom, I need to do this, or Dad, hey, I need this done. And you throw down everything to, to tend to them. That's a pattern. And so, not saying this always happens, but at times, your children can take advantage. <laughs> they can take advantage, just like a partner can take advantage. You're like... Well, why is my mate taking advantage of me? Why is my mate seeming to find it okay or comfortable with taking advantage of me? Well, because at the time, the way we respond and the way we accept certain behaviors in our relationships, in our, in our friendships, in our parenting, we tend to say okay to certain things. And when we do that, we find ourselves very miserable. So I want you guys to get this. There comes a time when you have to say, and I said this last week, how important it is you have to say no, right? And not only say no, but learn what you're doing in your pattern that you're doing every time you come in response with the situ situation or scenario. For instance, like I said, I was dealing with unavailable men. Okay, so stop dealing with them. It's not that hard. It's just change your taste. Why are you finding there to be an attraction in men just not available? And you're always in a wonder, like, hmm, where is he at? What's he doing? Who is he with? I ain't heard from him. Is he going to call me? Huh, are we going to do something this evening? Well, I don't know. Why are you signing your name to that? That doesn't make sense. So, like I said, I changed the pattern. And so, anyone that I decide to be in, a, in, in some type of engagement or relationship with, now there has to be a mutual, okay, a mutual confine of in, in, engagement. If you're not engaging, then there's no sense in me wanting a relationship with you. You're not, you're not, you just don't have it to give me. So, there's no sense in me trying to run towards a man that doesn't have, doesn't have, any energy to run back so why why would I keep dealing with that I mean that's silly now that's as a prime example when our children keep coming over and asking mom can you do this mom can you do that and they're not taking into account that you have a life too you have to sit back and say why do I keep saying yes I can do it for them perhaps maybe I need to start restructuring my response to them I'm being taken advantage of. See, a lot of times we don't understand how we get in these situations or scenarios to where we're being taken advantage of, right? We get, we get um, comfortable, if you will, with different people in our life and we accept the nonsense just to have them in our life. But... We have to sit back and say, but is this person really valuable in my life? And remember earlier I said, what grade do they have? If I sit back and look, what is my graded spouse or graded lover in my life? What Are they getting an A, B, C, D, or F? And if they're not really coming with a, 
A, A, A, or B, why are we still dealing with them? Why are we still being accepting of the lower level behavior or engagement that they're giving us or gifting us? We have to get to a point where we're like, no, this is unacceptable, and sit down and talk about what can we do to change this? How can we change this? How can we make this better? Are they willing to work with you or not? And if not, then it's over. Hey, we ain't got time to waste. Like I say, tomorrow is not promised. So why waste time with someone that's really not even interested, <laughs> remotely interested in being engaged with you, trying to see how you're doing, checking on you? There's none of that. Then obviously you're just not that significant in their life. I don't know how many people that I've been, I've had the pleasure of coaching that has come to me and asked me um what do you think about this relationship what do you think about this relationship do you think I'm in a good relationship and I ask them well um are they engaging with you are they putting the time in with you do they find do they do they go out of their way for you because that should be easy that's the easy part because in the beginning, especially, everybody should be running to each other, right? Towards each other. At least in the beginning of the relationships, people are running and rushing to each other. Can't wait to touch and hold and love on each other. And then over time, it starts to change, right? And it's like, why is it changing? Well, because I'm not feeling as lovey-dovey anymore. But why? Because of what? Change? The feelings aren't the same? We're not getting enough attention? But a lot of times we're not taking the time out to see, wait, wait a minute. I think I need to make sure that my mate is okay. And if this person is from a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being someone that you really have no you know, engagement with and 10 being someone you really have a lot of engagement with, if this person... You're claiming to have a 10 in a level of engagement and you're not hearing from them. You're not talking to them. You're not getting any, you know, conversation or checkups on you or welfare checks. They're not, they're not coming by to see you. Then it's just not there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just not there. And it's just to the point where you have to sit back and say, you know what? You're just not that into me. And that's fine. But I'm... At, at a point now that I would rather have someone a little more engaged, a little more involved with wanting to spend some time with me. It's not where I have to pull teeth to get it to happen either. It just happens because it's a mutual thing. So, I mean, it's very important that we're clear about what it is we desire and want in relationships. But a lot of times we don't know. And a lot of times we're not stepping out to evaluate, well, wait a minute, is this relationship really good or it's really not? Is this relationship to the degree I believe it should be in or it's really not? And then, like I said, we have to look at our patterns. Why are we signing and endorsing things that are not really okay in the relationship? Just to say you have one. Why are you allowing people to take advantage of you when you just don't have it to give them? And they're taking advantage because they know you will say yes. Not okay. I want people to begin to get their power back. You're not empowered. When you're finding yourself in between a rock and a hard place and you can't find yourself any type of real peace. You're finding yourself in a in a in a rut because you keep dealing with people that are unavailable to be involved with you or engaged with you that's unacceptable and the thing about patterns that has a lot of people conflicted and really just frustrated is because they're not learning to unlearn how to get out of the, the rut they're in because the pattern you're in can be changed. You just have to be the one to change it. It's really that simple. Learn to unlearn. If you continue to teach someone a certain way to treat you, they will continue to treat you that way. 
It's just what it is. We teach people how to treat us. And that's something that, that's a common saying. You hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, we teach people how to treat us. But no, it's really facts. We teach people, look, treat me this way and whoa, we're good. Treat me this way and we're disassociated. So as long as we're clear, the relationship will flow accordingly. And so when we have that understanding, it's not like, oh my God, I thought, I thought that I was going to have someone not really involved. I thought that I was going to have somebody just take on whatever because of whatever reason. It's like, no, actually, we need to tell people how we want to be treated. And even if you're in a great relationship or in a great parenting arrangement or you're great with your siblings... All of that's fine and well, but things change. And like I said, we have to learn to unlearn some things. It's just vital, all right? I hope it helps somebody today. Like I said, every Sunday I do this, 12 o'clock p.m. This is my part of my ministry. And also, if you have not yet signed up for the Learn to Unlearn course, you are missing out. I'm telling you, this, this course is powerful. It helps you to learn to unlearn some things. And then it also increases your advantage in your life. It's not hard to unlearn. It's just sticking to the desire to want to unlearn some things. And then getting into a new routine. Finding a new found, oh, okay, I can do this. And being proud of your new decision. And sticking to it. It's just that easy. I'm going to put the link here so you know how to get to the course. It's $97 and that course will help you so much with healing your healing your life, gaining wisdom, wisdom, learning how to be more discerning, all of those factors that you need in order to breed a newfound you, breed a newfound life. Man, it's just that simple and it's on your time. So it's when you get done with your course and decide to say, hey, I'm going to do this for me. When are you ready? I ask all my clients, when are you ready? You ready to do this? You ready to make some changes? Are you ready to change your patterns? If you are, call me. 844-5-WISDOM. Call me. Extension 0. And I can help you to do that. I'm out of here, everybody. I hope you guys all have a wonderful, blessed Sunday. And uh, make sure you sign up for being a subscriber to my YouTube channel. Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great day. Bye.